The search for clues continues in the case of a missing flight attendant. We'll have the latest on live report. Also, police call it a terrible case of child abuse, a child with burns, and police say his parents did not seek medical care. We'll have the latest. And one of Boise's oldest eyepieces is about to take on a whole new look. News Idaho at 6 starts now. You're watching KIVI Channel 6. This is News Idaho at 6. It's been a week and still no news on the whereabouts of a missing flight attendant. Thanks for joining us. I'm Don Nelson. And I'm Claudia Weatherman. Lynn Hanneman was last seen eight days ago in Boise. Police have received dozens of tips and continue to investigate, but so far nothing has turned up since her purse was discovered last Wednesday. News Idaho 6's Rob Piercy is following this story. He joins us live now from Ann Morrison Park, where the family plans to hold a candlelight vigil tonight. Rob? Oh, that's right, Claudia. They chose Ann Morrison Park because this has been an area of focus focus for police in their continuing investigation in this case. An investigation that this weekend continued uh, throughout most of the weekend as they searched many parts of Boise. The National Guard actually joined in the search, searching all throughout the city as well as a helicopter searched in the foothills. Now there are still no significant leads in this case, though they have re received close to 150 tips and the phone calls are still coming in. Now despite this, they still haven't been able to confirm whether or not Henneman was actually at the Funny Bone on Sunday night. Now, the family has been out here at Ann Morrison and areas up and down the Green Belt searching the past uh, week now. And tonight they are going to hold their candlelight vigil out here. They're asking people to meet at the footbridge here in Ann Morrison Park at 630 and bring their own candles with them. Local religious leaders have been involved with this, with organizing this uh, vigil tonight. And uh, it's expected to be a fairly large turnout for tonight's vigil. Donna Claudia. All right. Thank you very much, Rob Pierce reporting live from Ann Morrison Park. The trial of an accused murderer got underway today in Ada County. David Harp is charged with murdering Jason McQuilkin last year. McQuilkin was found shot to death in a remote area near CUNA. Harp also faces charges of unlawful possession of a firearm. He faces a maximum sentence of life in prison or the death penalty. Harp pleaded not guilty to the charges. Another court hearing today, this one in Canyon County. A Napa couple is on trial charged with burning their boy in a bathtub of scalding hot water. Police say Matthew Weaver dipped his stepson in 150 degree water. Mother Frances Hall Weaver told police they didn't take the boy to the hospital. When investigators made their first visit to the house in March, the burned boy was in the bathroom. I saw a small, small child sitting on the toilet um, with his hands in between his buttocks in the toilet. And um, he was rocking back and forth in, from side to side. The detective says the stepfather wiped the boy's bottom with a dry wash rag, then he showed her the severe burns. The detective took the boy to the emergency room and the other children were placed with an aunt. The trial continues tomorrow. Today, Canyon County community leaders declared the month of October Domestic Violence Awareness Month. That was the focus of a conference at the Nampa Civic Center to increase awareness about domestic violence and resources that are available to the victims. News Idaho 6's Maria Vallejo is at the conference. She joins us from the newsroom. Maria, I understand the slogan for the campaign on domestic violence is there's no excuse for abuse. That's right, Claudia. Today, community leaders were stressing one point. No one should have to live in fear. Sher domestic violence survivor Sharon Siegel agrees. And I swear to God, I thought I was going to die. Over a year ago, Siegel escaped from an abusive relationship that ended after her husband raped her. Today, in front of a crowded conference room, she relived the nightmare. And then he violently proceeded to take off my clothes and uh, get the scratch marks, kick marks. I defied for my life. I thought to God he was going to kill me. And I'll tell you what, ladies, when he was three, he just brushed me aside and like a rag doll. I mean, like no, no conscience, nothing. And then. And then what he did is he just took a shower. After her speech, Siegel encouraged other uh, domestic I, I violence can't. victims to take a proactive approach. They need to get on the phone and know that they have choices and that they can call the probation officers, that they can call the judge, and that they can call representatives. Folks like Elizabeth Davis, who works at the Canyon County sure, Prosecutor's sure, Office, can point victims of domestic abuse in the right direction. It's basically educating them, letting them know what their resources are. Uh, we attend the criminal ju all the hearings with them, trial, pre-trial, if it's a felony, preliminary hearing. And that's exactly what Davis did in Sharon Siegel's case. Even though the legal system did help Siegel recover from the violent attack, she feels the case failed miserably. Her husband pled guilty to felony domestic battery rape. He only served 30 days in jail for 
when the minimum sentence for this crime is 18 months. Claudia? All right, thank you. News Idaho 6's Maria Vallejo, live from the newsroom. Opponents of Boise's nudity ordinance take their case to a judge tomorrow. Two dance clubs and a theater want the judge to prevent the ban from taking effect. An attorney fighting the ordinance says the nudity ban is unconstitutional because it infringes on the First Amendment. And she adds cities don't have the power to adopt such laws, only the state can. Mayor Brent Coles has repeatedly said he's committed to preventing new dance clubs from ruining neighborhoods. A donation to the city of Boise brings light passenger rail closer to reality. Today, the Union Pacific Railroad donated nearly 15 miles of track to the city. It's located in the southern part of Boise and is worth nearly $6 million. In exchange, the city agreed to purchase an additional three and a half miles of track at a cost of $2 million. Mayor Cole says the rail line is a valuable addition to Boise. Again, the day will come when uh, passenger trains can be a part of, of our community and part of our intermodal system. Amtrak is looking at the possibility of rail service between Boise and Portland. Mayor Coles says this donated section of track could be used for that type of service. Well, now, if you park illegally downtown as of today, the fine you face is higher. Here's a look. Expired meters will now cost you $7 instead of 5 Exceeding the time limit at a space without a meter goes from 5 to $10. Parking in a no parking or in a yellow curb now gets you a $25 ticket, and refeeding the meters is now a $14 violation. The idea is to make drivers more aware of the limited time you get at a parking meter space. Downtown merchants here want a lot of turnover over at metered spaces so customers just stopping in have a quick convenient place to park by the middle of this month new electronic meters will be installed well soon downtown Boise will have one more attraction Lynn Hightower joins us now from News Idaho 6 downtown Lynn one of downtown Boise's oldest buildings is about to look new again that's right Claudia the renovation of the Empire building could be an example for downtowns all over the state developers are saving the history on the outside of the building but the inside is brand and spanking new and ready for business. The Empire Building, built in 1909 by the Empire Hardware Company. But the only thing left of the hardware store is the name. We're going to go from one side of the elevator to the other, bringing the same red granite in that's on the exterior. Developer Jim Tomlinson is building the future literally inside Boise's past. It sat on this corner for 90 years, and people have memories here. And Those memories are preserved on the outside, right down to the aluminum windows with the original spruce green trim. But the inside, a complete gut and redo. And in 90 years, developers thought these walls might hold some surprises. Expected to find a lot more historic uh, paraphernalia than we did. We found magazines and messages that uh, people had written on pieces of wood and stuck into spaces. The only surprise, the walls themselves. None of the walls were wood and, and lath and plaster, which we expected to find. They were all gypsum blocks, about uh, three feet long by eight inches thick, and every single wall. The biggest headache of this renovation, getting around turn-of-the-century fireproofing. Very, very modern thinking uh, in 1909. But modern thinking now is refitting the building with Boise's unique and efficient geothermal heat and well water cooling, making the bank next door a complement to a building once thought an eyesore, and bringing the vitality of Boise's downtown back a couple of blocks. A tenth in Idaho running down to 8th was the primary downtown uh, years ago and it's important to keep it here. Well, it's a $10 million renovation that began a year ago, July. Retail on the bottom floor's office space above. We'll see the grand reopening of the Empire Building in December, and it'll be something to see. Well, when the Empire Building reopens, it'll be on the west end of what's called the downtown core. Retail here is spreading out, moving back to where it once began, 10th Street. We thought our street traffic might be down, our, our walk-by traffic, but I don't think it is. It's uh, because of some of the professional offices around here. We seem to have a lot of street traffic that we were not expecting. 
Well, Lindley Glass, the Boise Cafe, and the new Idaho Toy Trains join the Empire Building on the new west end of Boise's downtown core. And planners say downtown Boise could be a lesson for other downtowns, Claudia. If you renovate it, they will come. Yeah, it seems to be getting better and bigger. You betcha. All right, thank you very much. Lynn Hightower, News Idaho 6 downtown. Well, a new recycling program coming to Ada County coming up on News Idaho 6. How this is good news for the landfill, but maybe bad news for your pocketbook. And coming up in sports, the latest on the status of the Continental Basketball Association. Could the owners of the Idaho Stampede and the other teams be headed to court? You're watching News Idaho at 6. This is News Idaho at 6 with Claudia Weatherman, Don Nelson, Steve Liebenthal with Your Weather Idaho, and Wall to Wall Sports with Dave Tester. We are Idaho. There's only one way to improve a steak like this. Serve it with all the golden fried shrimp you can eat. And that's exactly what we're doing right now at Sizzler for just $9.99. That's right, a juicy sirloin steak, hot off the grill with all the extras and all the succulent fried shrimp you can eat for less than 10 bucks. So gather the family or grab a friend and head to Sizzler. Steak and all you can eat shrimp at the place for sizzling steaks. Did you know that vehicles are one of the leading causes of wildland fire in Idaho? When you drive off main roads, dry grass and brush can build up under your vehicle where temperatures of the exhaust system can reach 1,000 degrees or more. That's twice as hot as this match. So please, during these hot months, don't drive or park on dry grass and keep the bottom of your car free of all debris. Help keep your public lands safe from fire. Wheel of Fortune is dropping anchor for another week of fun. It's Ships Ahoy Week. It's like a week on the love boat without gopher. Wheels exciting and new. These contestants are rocking the boat, and it's anyone's guess who will win big money. Things could get rough. For the audience, we are passing out malaria pills. They're winning QE2 cruises, convertibles, and brand new boats. Shuffleboard, anyone? Watch all this week on Wheel. Tonight at 6.30 on KIVI Idaho 6. Wherever disaster strikes, from the devastation of hurricanes in the east to the ravages of fires in the west, your American Red Cross is there. The Red Cross offers assistance to those left homeless and even helps some Idaho residents breathe easier. The Red Cross lends a hand whenever, wherever it is needed. So help us help your neighbors by supporting your local Red Cross. Closed captioning on KIVI News Idaho 6 is brought to you thanks to the generosity of the Assistance League of Boise. The Ada County Landfill will benefit from a new recycling program in the Treasure Valley. It's a first for the Valley's fastest growing community. Meridian's new curbside recycling program started today. Residents said yes when they were asked if they wanted a recycling program, even if it meant a few more dollars a month. Very impressed at this point uh, with the, the turnout and the reception and, the, and the, the amount of participation that we're experiencing for the first day of the kickoff. The program means items like newspapers and milk jugs will stay out of the growing landfill. The curbside program will add $2.30 to their monthly trash bill. Students from BSU will have a chance to help us be safe from nuclear waste. The Idaho National Engineering and Environmental Lab and another research group are funding 13 projects. The details were announced today. BSU will work on three of those projects. The goal is to gain a better understanding of nuclear waste and how to clean it up. This means we're getting a major project activity going. We'll have the funding to get it uh, started and get labs set up and get students involved. And we'll have a lot of interactive activity that will be positive for the development of the state. Boise State will get about $3 million over the next three years. BSU President Charles Rook says this is a great way to combine top researchers to tackle an important issue. In business news, Wall Street opened the week with kind of mixed results today. The blue chip Dow Jones posted a gain of 49 points today, while the tech-heavy Nasdaq dove 104. Here's a look at Idaho's top 10 stocks.
50 states, up to 50% less. For National Directory Assistance, dial 411 and save up to 50% over area code 555-1212. Jeep Grand Cherokee is more refined and civilized than ever. Rest assured, it still hasn't lost its animal instincts. Check one out at your Jeep dealer. Hear more. See more. Say more. Be more. On October 11th, the Idaho Inclusiveness Coalition, in conjunction with Boise State University, brings you the Idaho Inclusiveness Symposium, featuring keynote speaker Roberto Maestas. To register for the day-long symposium, including workshops and luncheon, visit our website at idahoincludes.org. Tickets for the luncheon only are available at all select seat outlets, or by calling 426-1766. Hello? No, sorry. Star 6-9 is on your line. Who is that, Joel? The Apple Bill. So you can find out who you missed. That's Daddy. Kevin Sorbo stars in Gene Roddenberry's Andromeda. He's the captain. He's the captain of the uh, Starship Andromeda Senate. Dylan Hunt, put him in modern-day terms. He's like a Navy SEAL in a way. He's a tough guy. He's a fair guy. Uh, crew comes first. The ship comes first. Anybody tries to screw with that, they're in trouble. Battlefield. Coming to television soon. On the web now. Something completely different. Premiering October 7th at 10.30 on KIVI, Idaho 6. Don't tell me, Miss Marquis, that you're not allowed. Are you not following what I'm saying to you? Is it not piercing through? Judge Judy. Starting the work week on a high note, I think, right? Uh, yeah, not bad, although temperatures today didn't get quite as warm as we wanted them to because of a little cloud cover. Let's check those temperatures right now as we take a look outside from the top of the Grove Hotel, the Albertsons Channel 6 Tower Camp showing some subdued light out there, not a lot of sunshine. Our uh, temperatures right now are in the 60s, 64 in Boise, 65 in Napa, 64 in Caldwell. Winds are coming out of the uh, north at 12 miles per hour, 23% humidity, the pressure at 29.99 and holding steady, no precipitation in the last 24 hours. And here's a look at statewide temperatures, which in valley locations are in the 60s, mountain locations mostly in the 50s right now. Let's go ahead and move ahead to that map and you'll see that uh, we have a temperature of 53 in McCall right now, Stanley at 51. 68 in Pocatello, 63 in Idaho Falls here in the western part of the state, mostly 60s. But again, we wanted it to get a little warmer in Boise today. Here's a look at the temperature trend. You'll notice 12 hours ago we were at 48 degrees, and from there we rose up into the low 60s. But that's about the time the clouds started rolling in. You'll notice that Idaho Falls actually got a little bit warmer than Boise today. And that's because that cloud cover just kind of kept a damper on things. We have warmer temperatures to the south of us, 73 in Elko, 73 in Salt Lake City. So we're just on that dividing line between the cold air to the north and the warm air to the south, which means that the jet stream is in our general vicinity, which is why we saw some gusty winds in some locations today. We have clouds moving in from the west, but those should clear out, especially after the sun drops and temperatures start to cool. We expect to have those clouds around this evening, but they will clear out after midnight, and that will allow temperatures temperatures to drop into the low 40s tonight. Here's a look at the wide view and we have a ridge of high pressure building over the Pacific. That will influence our weather later in the week, but between now and then, the cool air dropping out of the north will be the major factor. So for the next several days, temperatures will be in the mid 60s to around 70 degrees and then we'll warm back into the 70s by Friday and Saturday. So here's a look at the forecast for tomorrow in Twin Falls. Uh, morning low of about 42 degrees, mostly sunny skies tomorrow and up to 68 for the afternoon high. In Sun Valley, kind of the same story, mostly sunny skies, but a cooler start starting out at freezing 32 degrees, then 60 is your forecast high there. In McCall, much cooler overnight with mostly clear skies, a morning low of about 22 and the possibility of some fog early in the morning. That should burn off by midday, mostly sunny for the remainder of the day with a high of 55. Here in the valley, looking at mostly sunny skies, morning lows in the mid-30s to low 40s, afternoon highs right around 70 degrees. Boise and Napa tonight, we do have those clouds with us now. Those should be clearing out after midnight and our overnight low at about 42 degrees. If the clouds clear out a little earlier, that temperature will drop a little farther 
farther down to the upper 30s than tomorrow. Mostly sunny. Those northwest winds at 10 to 20 with an afternoon high of about 70 degrees. In the five-day forecast, the next couple of days after tomorrow, we're looking at 60s, but then back into the 70s as we approach the weekend. Just in time. Just in time, as it should be. Thanks, Steve. Dave Tester joining us now. I want to know, are we going to have a CBA season with the Stampede? I was going to say you and everybody else. <laughs> yeah. More trouble for the Stampede basketball team today. Compliments of Isaiah Thomas, the old owner, looking for a check. We'll explain if the postman delivered or if the lawyers are drawing up papers. Plus, look who's on the cover of our favorite cereal. From Pocatello with milk, the details on the Golden Girl when we come back. After spending all day hauling sheets of drywall, the last thing we want to do is carry heavy bags of water softener salt. That's why we use Kinetico water conditioners in our homes. They use less salt than other systems. And they're not electric. They don't use timers or computers, so we don't have to make any adjustments or worry about repairing expensive electrical components. And I don't have to lift those heavy bags. Call your Kinetico dealer today. Call Meridian Plumbing and Water at 888-7655. You know, I was nervous to call my dad back in Ireland and tell him I might be getting a divorce, but he really surprised me. Benji, when one door shuts, another opens. Turns out he was talking about the door to my guest bedroom. He's been living there ever since. Yeah, but I have to tell you, that mattress is a bit lumpy. And you call those pillows, they're more like sandbags. You can't close the window. We've got pigeons coming in there. They're nesting in, in the washstand. My dad, he's very supportive in his own way, you know, really. Wheel of Fortune is dropping anchor for another week of fun. It's Ships Ahoy Week. It's like a week on the love boat without gopher. Wheels exciting and new. These contestants are rocking the boat, and it's anyone's guess who'll win big money. Things could get rough. For the audience, we are passing out malaria pills. They're winning QE2 cruises, convertibles, and brand new boats. Shuffleboard, anyone? Watch all this week on Wheel. Tonight at 6.30 on KIVI Idaho 6. In any language. A little common sense goes a long way. She's television's ruling force. Judge Judy, ruler of the free world. Judge Judy, weekdays at 4, here on KIVI, Idaho 6. This is a little loud, like stupid written here. In deep space, a battle for freedom rages, and a people cry out for a hero. He is coming. Premiering October 7th at 10.30 on KIVI, Idaho 6. Well, the floodgates are starting to open up on the Idaho Stampede, not to mention the Continental Basketball Association as a whole. Today, the old ownership, they filed a formal letter of demand to Isaiah Thomas regarding his tardiness on a reported $1.2 million buyout installment. The former ownership was to receive a check no later than Sunday, thus the FedEx package with the legal papers on its way to Thomas. He'll then have 10 days to pay up or it's probably going to be arbitration. Litigation time is upon us, as we told you some six months ago. Former Stampede owner Bill Eilert telling me today he's very worried about receiving part one of a four-part cash installment from Isaiah. That's the legal action from Boise as well as a majority of the other nine team owners on the way. Thomas now facing tomorrow's deadline. This from the NBA to sell the league or else what appears to be happening there. He's trying to put the league in a trust, as we told you last month, and then attempts to sell it while he coaches the Pacers. If the NBA says no, Thomas either gives up his $22 million coaching job with the Indiana group or figures out a way to rid himself of the CBA. And sources in Chicago now telling me Thomas may be trying to work out an 11th hour deal to get the old owners back on board. This one going to get ugly. Keep in mind the CBA season along with the stampede starting in mid-December. Unbelievable numbers from Saturday's Vandal football game. Idaho quarterback John Welsh, Big West Player of the Week. If you missed the game here on Channel 6, we remind you of the first half phenom, or should that be rewind, the big place from Montana State. Uh, the junior from Chicago needed just a first half to rack up. Listen to this, 400 yards passing plus six touchdowns. 30 minutes work, well, that puts Welsh on track to take on a much tougher West Virginia football team, and that'll be this Saturday.
Yeah, it's uh, it's one of it's one of my best game, and uh, you know, but I couldn't have done it with those without those wide receivers. They made me look good, and you know, basically, I just throw the ball out to those guys and let them do the rest of the work. And the offensive line did a great job too, you know, keeping those guys off me. And uh, you know, right now we got some momentum going into next week's game, which is going to be a big game, and you know, this is a real advantage for us. Remember, you can watch West Virginia and Idaho that Saturday morning right here at 11 o'clock. Now, the Broncos get back to work after a week off. Boise State will head north Saturday to play Washington State. The Cougars coming off a loss two weeks ago to Idaho and then this week winning against Cal. Well, they'll be trying to prove they can play with the Big West and keep head coach Mike Price's job while the Broncos go with plans of breaking a Boise State jinx. I know this, that Boise State has never been able to beat a Pac-10 team, and, and that means Washington State. Uh, and that's something that our, our players have set as a goal, is something that we'd love to do is break into the win column against a Pac-10 team. But we also know that that's going to be a tough road to hoe, and uh, we're certainly looking forward to the challenge. Our Monday night football game, a good one tonight. Seattle taking on Kansas City. That game gets going at 7. Don't forget at the half. Our athlete of the week. If you need a little help understanding Dennis Miller, we might have the answer. Many of his references fly over the head. Now, you can't log on this onto this until tomorrow, Britannica.com for your help. You know, sometimes we struggle with Dennis. Well, anyhow, before we go, take a little uh, look at Stacy Dragila unveiling the new Wheaties box. That'll be at Yay. Don's favorite Walmart everywhere. What a thrill. Yeah. yeah well, the, look at look at the three of them just looking at it and saying, you know, She's not Wilkinson's happy. there going, can you believe I'm actually <laughs> on a Wheaties box? Pretty surreal. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks, Dave. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Albertsons Channel 6 Tower Cam is located high atop the Grove Hotel. Wheel of Fortune is dropping anchor for another week of fun. It's Ships Ahoy Week. It's like a week on the love boat without gopher. Wheels exciting and new. These contestants are rocking the boat, and it's anyone's guess who'll win big money. Things could get rough. For the audience, we are passing out malaria pills. They're winning QE2 cruises, convertibles, and brand new boats. Shuffleboard, anyone? Watch all this week on wheel. Tonight at 6.30 on KIVI Idaho 6. Announcing a breakthrough in pizza technology. A pizza inside a pizza. To demonstrate how much we can pack inside Pizza Hut's new insider, we're going to take this elephant and pack him inside this phone booth. Smashing. How do we get it all in? Well, we took one thin crust with six cheeses, sealed it with another crust and even more cheese. And that's the amazing new insider pizza, all for just $9.99. Get that, will you? The insider pizza from Pizza Hut. Another one of the best pizzas under one roof. He said he was totally dominating you, and he wouldn't let you do anything. No, they'll argue, though. I mean, so you argue. Time to take control. If somebody you feel is trying to control your life, you don't put them in a situation where they can do that. I wasn't allowed to go in the place. Don't tell me, Miss Marquis, that you're not allowed. You're allowed to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Are you not following what I'm saying to you? Is it not piercing through? Judge Judy. Tomorrow afternoon at 4 on KIVI, Idaho 6. Hello, I'm Dirk Kempthorne. If you buy into the idea of keeping jobs here in Idaho, if you buy into improving our schools and making sure that our children are some of the best educated in the world, and if you buy into the idea of buying the best products, then you'll buy into Buy Idaho. Buy Idaho products and services. Do business where you see the Buy Idaho membership logo. Buy Idaho. Good for you. Good for Idaho. For 17 years, cyclists from around the world have come to test their mettle on the scenic roads of Idaho in the HB LaserJet Women's Challenge. It takes more than just guts and determination to compete in this race. An alert mind, a cool head, and an eye on safety are just as important. Every Women's Challenge cyclist wears a helmet wherever she rides. So wherever you ride, ride smart. Remember, Idaho, heads up, eyes open, and helmets on. This message sponsored by the HP LaserJet Women's Challenge, the Idaho Transportation Department, and this station. The secrets of Idaho's hardworking past are being revealed not far from Centerville. 32 volunteers spent two weeks marking, digging, and sifting through historic Chinese mining sites. They're helping the Forest Service uncover the daily life of workers who mined for gold more than 100 years ago. It's really fun. We found a lot of neat stuff, and it was quite a thrill. Uh, noodle bowls, um, soy sauce jar, parts, broken pieces of pottery, uh, square nails. 
the archaeology adventure is part of the Forest Service volunteer program called Passport in Time. And it's great weather to go exploring, whether it's in the mountains or here in the valley. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Typical autumn weather, looking at 60s and 70s. All right. All right. We'll see you at 10 with the latest local news. Good night. Good night.